a lot of my diode lasers probably will not get used now just simply because of how fast and easy this thing is to operate. I got my hands on the newest CO2 smart laser on the market, the 55 watt P2 from Xtool. And I'm excited to show you guys all the features of this machine along with a short tutorial that is easy to follow. If you're in the market for a laser or want to know more about laser engraving, this video will cover what you need to know without all the fluff. After I unpacked the P2 from its box, I was pleased with the overall aesthetic and sleek design. The dimensions of this desktop laser are slightly larger than the popularized Glowforge, coming around 40 by 25 by 11 inches. The black and gray is also a solid color combo in my opinion. On the outside of the laser, you will find all these self-explanatory parts, like the power switch, on and off button, emergency stop, exhaust port, and a few more minor things. What I would like to highlight though is the smart screen. This panel on top of the laser is used to monitor the health of your machine and give you information, such as when your lid is locked during the engraving and the current temperature the P2 is at. Now getting to the inside of the P2, the engraving area is the largest of any desktop CO2 laser, measuring 26 by 14 inches. This gives us nine more total inches over the Glowforge and Gweek or Gwak Cloud CO2 lasers, which are the direct competitors of this machine. This feature alone, I think will be a huge selling point for Xtool since we will be able to engrave larger projects. Inside the engraving area, you will find removable slats and a removable base plate. This accommodates optional Xtool accessories like the RA2 Pro rotary attachment, riser bed, and conveyor feeder, which we will look at shortly. Most of the included material came well packaged inside of the laser, including the instruction manual, which tells us how to prep our laser for its first use. I'm briefly going to highlight this process, so refer to your instruction manual and do not skip this step. The first step is to add the correct amount of antifreeze and distilled water to the water tank. This will vary depending on the climate that you are in. The second step is to set the optical path, which means to make sure all of the mirrors that reflect the laser beam are in alignment. Some of the lasers may arrive with perfect alignment, but it is good to check the optical path no matter which CO2 laser you are using. But before we jump into the testing, let me briefly show you some of the unique features that Xtol put into this laser, which will probably be the biggest factor in whether you will buy this or not. How does the P2 compare to a diode laser in terms of power and speed? Well, the P2's fast 600 millimeter seconds of engraving speed paired with the 55 watts of power makes for quicker processing, freeing up the time that projects take. If I were to give you the simplest explanation of comparing the CO2 laser to any diode laser, it would be this. The high power of a CO2 tube and the specific wavelength that it operates at makes for quicker light absorption in materials when engraving and cutting. So in simple terms, it's way more efficient than a diode laser, which doesn't make diode lasers bad. Another feature of the P2 is the dual 16 megapixels live preview cameras that allow for a simple drag and drop of your images. So what you see on your camera is where the engraving is going to be. The second close range camera allows you to zoom very close to the material so you can make sure you are getting accurate engravings. And the feature I think that I am most excited about is the curved surface engraving. The Xtool P2 can scan curved objects in 3D space while adjusting the focal length during the processing, giving you the ability to engrave on objects that are uneven or curved. This is going to be huge among many creators and I'm super excited for this. Another cool feature is the automatic pass through. When attaching the optional roll conveyor feeder, you can engrave very large projects up to 9.8 feet to be exact. I have a piece of four foot hickory, I will test this on shortly. And also the pass through function is available with or without the roll conveyor feeder. Another cool feature I'm putting in this video is the batch processing. The P2 can recognize shapes through the camera, fill patterns on multiple objects and engrave them in one batch. And are you guys still with me after all that? Now we are going to jump into our projects. For the first project, we are going to be using this three millimeters thick basswood. 
And when I place the material down in the bed of the P2 and close the lid, it will take a snapshot. As I import the image to engrave, we can drag it around on the material where we want it. Where you see this image at in relationship to the material is exactly where it will engrave at. I will now measure our project to set the focus of the laser. And if I press the close view button, we can further line up our image with greater accuracy. Since I am using the beta software in Creative Space for this laser, we don't have any presets, but I will set my working parameters to my guide. Now, once we hit the start button, the laser lid is going to lock and the engraving will start. For the first project we are working on here, I wanted to test the cutting. I downloaded this file from Etsy, and when I went to cut this, it turned out terrible. This was just simply too brittle, and the person that made this design, it just, it's some poor design elements in it, and that's the reason it's breaking apart here. But it's a cool idea. I may try this on a different project, but let's move on. I am going to run this test file, which tells us which speed and power we need the laser to be at. I should have done this first, but we are going ahead and get this step out of the way. And by the way, I will have this file to download below for you to use with this specific laser. Now let's find the file that is actually going to work for us. I'm a huge fan of the Mandalorian, so I found this file on Etsy, and this is the Mandalorian pointing the blaster out. The laser is cutting through this at a fast speed, much faster than my diode laser, so I am excited about that. And this cut through really nice. Really happy with the way this turned out. And by the way, the P2 is compatible with Lightburn, but I am just using Creative Space since Lightburn is still receiving some updates. For this next part, I wanted to do a simple engraving. And do not ask me, I cannot get away from bears. So I found a similar image to the one we used earlier with a bear and trees coming up in its body. And this is to really just test how the engraving looks. And it came out really good. I'm, I mean, there's no complaints with this. The power mixed with the speed of this laser, it can spit this out pretty fast. So no complaints. And just to throw another quick engraving in here, I engraved this cool image on this acacia cutting board. So it turned out really well. I am pleased with this. Let me show you how the batch processing works. After I imported and resized my image, I am going to click on Smart Fill. And when I do this, the image is automatically going to appear on the other dog tags. Now, I did have to readjust a few of these, but this feature worked pretty well. And I did lower the speed of my laser a little bit because these engravings were turning out a little light for my liking, but the last one turned out really good. And moving on, we are going to cut some acrylic. And not only that, it is transparent, meaning that the wavelength of the CO2 can actually penetrate and cut through the transparent acrylic. That's something we can't do with diode lasers. I can't wait to make some more of these. These are just so cool. I have never engraved a rock before, so I wanted to throw this test in this video. I should have increased the power just a little bit, but this still turned out really cool. You can see the white lettering on here, and if I run my thumbnail across this, you can feel it catching. Another super cool project you can do. I want to show you guys the optional riser base. This works by setting the laser on top of the base, which allows for higher object engraving. When we flip both lids of the base down, we have a pass-through option which no longer limits the section of material we want to engrave. On the right side of the base, you will find some extra stored space when you flip down the lid. I plan to keep my slats in here and some smaller material for engraving. When using the riser base, you will need to use the tape measure. This will tell you which height to set the base plate at. And this is super simple, guys. I'm testing this feature on the block of pine here, and it worked well. Another optional accessory that Extol has is the automatic conveyor feeder. And this is super cool, guys. This is made to work hand in hand with the riser base and allows us to engrave larger and long materials by automatically feeding the material through the laser. As I stick this four foot piece of hickory in the conveyor, I am going to set the quick matching pressure gauge to tighten down on the material. 
To keep this video from being too long, I am going to eyeball where my font is on Creative Space and do a simple scoring test to test this out. Okay, here we go. Guys, this thing is awesome. Okay guys, I got the lettering a little too long, so we are going to pull this out. This is so stinking cool. Even though I messed this up, I got my lettering way too long and the laser stalled, it still turned out really cool. I just wanted to do a simple scoring across the board here, and I'm happy. Like, the possibilities that I'm seeing with this machine is pretty crazy. One more thing, we can actually process a little over nine feet of material, 9.4 feet, I think they said, to be exact. So. You guys can see the potential with this machine. So in my next video, hopefully I will perfect this. Okay, those projects were super fun to make for this video. I want to show you more, but I am afraid that this video is getting too long. But overall, looking at all of the projects that I've done here, mistakes included, I'm really happy. This is, this turned out to be a really good laser from what I am seeing. This will be my go-to laser over my diode lasers probably because of the ease of use. Overall, these projects turned out really good. And just something I would like to stress here is the just simple drag and drop and everything else was really a breeze. Uh, much easier than my diode lasers when I got them in. If there is one thing that I had to point out that I did not like, it would be the glass on the lid. It just scratches way too easily. I went to clean my glass with a clean microfiber cloth and it put some small scratches into the glass. And this was also a problem with the M1 diode laser as well. Just the glass needs to be a little more scratch resistant. Now for the big question, is the Xtool P2 worth its current price tag? I think that when you compare this to its direct competitors, for the features that you get, the engraving area that it has, and the price point it comes in at, I think you have a heck of a competitor with this machine. You may have to look around for a laser that would be right for you, but as far as my opinion, this one fits my bill in more categories than the other CO2 lasers do. A lot of my diode lasers probably will not get used now just simply because of how fast and easy this thing is to operate. And I say that unbiasedly, guys. I know I'm using just the X tool, but I've done all the map and this is the one <laughs> that is checking out for my needs. If you are interested in this laser, I will have the links below in the description and the comments so you can check it out. Pending on the time you're watching this video, Xtol is running their Easter event, which is going on from now through April 20th of 2023. And if you purchase a laser now, you can save, well, a pretty good amount of money. So if you wanna take advantage of that, you can check the links below. And also just to let you guys know, they usually run some different sale events through the year. So if you really need to wait and get this on sale, just check the links below and I will tell you what's going on. They are affiliate links, so anything purchased through those links will help support this channel at no extra cost to you, and I cannot thank you enough. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and more importantly, have been able to make an educated decision on whether you should get this laser or not. As I said, the links are below. You can check it out. I'll see you guys later. Love you. Talk to you soon.